This is Megan Black with Inside Pool Extreme News. I'm here at the 12th Annual Derby City Classic at the One Pocket Hall of Fame Banquet. I went to China and played Happy the Chinaman for 30 days and 30 nights. When I was done with him, he wasn't so happy anymore. Anyway, I'm going to tell you a couple of true stories. Scott's honor here, too. This young fellow lived in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, about 40 miles from Pittsburgh. He's about 15 years old. And we played pool. Anytime he got losing, he cried like a little baby. Big crocodile tears come out of his eyes. And he used to come into Pittsburgh when he was 15 years old, hustling around. And I used to stake him for a dollar a game and made sure he had a bad game so I could watch him cry. <laughs> uh, I'm here with Steve Booth. Hi, Steve. How are you? Very good. How are you? So what gave you the idea to come up with a One Pocket Hall of Fame? Do you play One Pocket? Uh, absolutely. I, I do play One Pocket. I love the game. And uh, I started the, the OnePocket.org website. And as part of the website, I wanted to have uh, a part on the website that honored the, the great one, one pocket players. So the first thing I did is I went to the BCA Hall of Fame and I started looking there for the one pocket players. And I did find a couple, but I realized, hey, there's a lot of really top one pocket players that they're missing from here. And then when I started to think about it, of course, one pocket has always been a, uh, an action, a gambling kind of game, and that's not really the direction that the BCA likes to put a lot of emphasis on. So it's understandable. They focus on the major tournament winner, winners, and that's uh, one pocket is uh, not a category that they were, you know, generally were recognizing. So I thought I, we had a vote on onepocket.org. All the members on onepocket.org vote. And uh, that first year, and I put some names up there on the internet, and I was thinking it was just going to be a virtual one Pocket Hall of Fame. But I told Grady about it, and uh, I asked Grady if I could do a little presentation for him at his tournament down in Gulfport, Mississippi in 2004. And Grady was our top vote getter for the very first year of election. Because we cover, we include tournament wins, action, and education and promotion of the game. And when you think about that, you think about Grady. So I did a little presentation for Grady at his own tournament, and he said, you know, that was nice, but we ought to have a dinner. And that's how it started. So it, and then it, it became and it grew into this, this big affair that you, you see here, so it's, it's not quite just so virtual anymore. Sorry I was a little long-winded. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. To me, this is like Colossus Christmas. I get to hang with all my pals, uh, guys that I've been around for many, many years a lot of things with, had some good times with, some bad times, they beat me. Come on! It's, it's been a long, hard grind playing pool for the past 53 years, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. I cannot begin to use the words to describe the emotions that I'm feeling being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's truly an honor to be included with all the great one pocket players that have come before me. Standing at this podium today, I realize I have come a long way from a little pool room in Manila. But it takes people throughout my career. I've been very fortunate to have great people around me. So many good people to push me harder and allow me to develop into the uh, kind of person and player I am today. People say that God doesn't go into the pool. But I never believe that because he has blessed me with the talent that I have today. I see a lot of smiling faces out there. Former members, players, friends, and the past especially those of you who are here and have traveled around the country to be here at Derby City. I have always said pool fans are the best fans in the world. But guys, I'm so proud of this award 
what is that worth? Anything if I don't have people that care about me. I say. How important was it for you to be inducted? And when you heard about it, how excited were you? Well, uh, I think this is my uh, main, uh, you know, memorable day for me because it's for the longest time. This is the first time somebody put me in this uh, prestigious award, you know. Oh. <laughs> Well, I have seen you play over the years, and everybody knows that they were waiting for this moment to happen. Um, any advice for future inductees? Well, you know, for the future inductee, they should uh, act like a gentleman and act like a real guy, you know. Sometimes, like me, they, they said I'm a gambler, but in reality, pool players play for cash. That's how we... We make money. That's how we uh, we uh, support our family. And now I'm already made. My wife is the one uh, making all the money, so I'm ready to retire. <laughs> so have a little patience and always be a gentleman on the table. That's true. You know, people hates those uh, those uh, what do you call that. Uh, a trying hard player, they, they get mad so quick, and they're like, they think they're already made guy. Well, you know, sometimes you have to look for the future, you know. And these guys think they are already made, and they act like a champion already. Well, any special moments in your past? Well, the happiest moment of my life when I win the first major. The first world championship that was held in Kentucky when I beat Bar uh, Nick, Nicky Barner in the final. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Around, you know, all the great bank pool champions around Chicago. And uh, old pal of mine, Glenn, Piggy Banks, Rogers, <laughs> Piggy Man. A real treat for me. See him finally get his due. I like to start off saying, give thanks for the Father Lord that brought me here. Uh, you know I'm, I play bank good, don't you? Right, Billy? It took me 10 years to beat Freddie one game of pool. <laughs> That's how I learned how to play good. Okay, I'd like to see one thing, I'll make this brief. Uh, I'd like to start off saying I give thanks to Steve Boots, One Pocket Door, Red Selvin, Mark Griffin. Uh, oh, I miss him. Oh, my God. Hustling, Tony, and also a host of people that signed me here. Mr. Freeman, can you raise your hand here? This gentleman made it possible for me to get here, Mr. Freeman Richmond. Thank you. Thank you. And Phil, Phil D. Gerardo, R. Taylor. And uh, yeah. I'm just glad to be here, and I think it's, it's a truly honor to be here in the Hall of Fame with so many great players. Okay. Ready? I'm going to turn the mic over to you. I want to make it brief. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Yeah, keep this going. I'm here with inductee Glenn Piggybanks Rogers. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm great. It's a pleasure to be here. 
Well, first and foremost, congratulations. I want to thank you and thank everybody and thank One Pocket Dot Oil for this presentation and it's an honor to be in the Hall of Fame with so many great players. What did it mean to you when you heard you were going to be inducted? Well, it was just like a kid opened up his Christmas present on the very first day. <laughs> I was flabbergasted, so like I stated again, it's an honor to be here with so many great players and be in the Hall of Fame with great players. Any special matches or moments? Well, it's special moments. I give thanks to all the people that's alive, and I give thanks, and my prayers go out to all the people that's not here that was here from last year. Okay? All right. Again, congratulations. Thank you so much, and thank you, Inside Pool, for doing this uh, commentary and presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to be friends with you, and thank you for this lifetime pool award. I really appreciate it. In case you all haven't figured it out yet, I'm going to snitch out. Harry is a certified pool buck, okay? <laughs> Harry needs pool like he needs a new hole in the head. But he's around us, he's a great friend to everybody, and it's true, he will back you, he, you can bite him, I hate to snitch all this off, <laughs> and he'll make a game and a bad one on top of that. <laughs> the only problem is he'll, he might make you over bet a little bit, that's one of the only little advantage he's going to keep for himself. Now he's a wonderful guy, you all know that, and it's, it's really a really tremendous treat to have him around here, you know, to come to the tournament, he makes the entire tournaments, you know, let's face it. Uh, there's only one Harry Plattis, and uh, now he's got a great law practice, but I do believe in my heart, that he's friends with John, John and I, that uh, if John and I brought him over to the house and promised to take him around to a lot of spots, he'd give up the practice for about a month and come hang with us, and maybe even sleep on the couch. That's, that's how much he loves pool. Harry, we all, the truth is, is there anybody that doesn't love Harry? I, I don't believe there is anybody, okay? this experience with all my friends and acquaintances that I've developed throughout the pool community over the years. I've had many run-ins with them, a lot of scoundrels, co-conspirators, <laughs> and wonderful people who I've had a, a wonderful time with who have developed into real good acquaintances and friends. And I really love the people, I love the atmosphere, and I love the action. I'm here at the One Pocket Hall of Fame dinner with Harry Plattis. Hi, how are you? Doing great. It's a wonderful night. First and foremost, congratulations. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. It's a very uh, humbling uh, award, believe me. I, how important is this to you? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's a, as I said, it's a humbling, uh, and I feel a lot of gratitude. Uh, I've, being a lawyer, and my chosen profession was being a lawyer for the last 40 years, and then uh, my avocation was billiards and pool and uh, learning to play in the tournaments and uh, meeting all these people and meeting the Damon Runyon characters of the world and traveling in that circuit has been a, a much different than the, than the legal field and so consequently uh, I've enjoyed it uh, immensely and I feel very, very happy to receive this award. You have had that push-pull back and forth from lawyer, pool player, lawyer, pool player. Oh, sure, sure. and. Uh, uh, I'm a contingency fee lawyer, which means that I, if I'm going to get <clears throat> get paid and receive any compensation, I have to win uh, for my client and for myself in the courtroom or in uh, any kind of settlements. And uh, if I'm not capable of doing that, it's much like uh, playing pool. If you're not capable of matching up correctly and performing as a pool player, then you're not going to be successful. So it all depends upon your performance, your attitude, and uh, your ability to, to succeed. Very, very true. Was there a defining moment in your past that you can remember or recall? Regarding pool? Regarding uh, I've always, I always... Or you being a lawyer. I, I always uh, loved pool. Uh, and I must admit that uh, I think the defining moment was uh, uh, I went to uh, school and I flunked out of college uh, playing pool. And I started over and uh, I ran into an old timer and... Uh, he beat me for, and for all the money I had. And I said to him, old timer, I said, I'm a better player, a better shot maker than you. And I says, I don't understand how you beat me. And he says, Sonny, see these gray hairs. 
and the light bulb came on and I quit playing pool and went back to college and went to law school and got a law degree and then uh, stayed out of the pool circuit for a long time, built my law practice and then started playing again. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations. Thank you very kindly and I uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you okay, good. I'm standing here with Doug Corwin, who is a relative of Minnesota Fats. Hi, how are you? Fine. I'm, I'm really excited, all the, all the love here and all these incredible people. Um, Rudy Wanderin was uh, my mother's oldest brother, uh, so he's my uncle. Uh, and, and my mother was his only full sibling. He has a couple half-sisters, but, but uh, my mother was his full. His, so that's how my relationship with him. I was born into the family. <laughs> yeah. How important is this induction to your family? Oh, it's it's an honor. You know, this is it's you know we're the Wanderums, but n now that uh, Minnesota's gone, uh, we haven't had much attention. Now we're back getting another 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, he, his his great nephews here tonight. His uh, wife T Bell is here. I mean, this it's kind of exciting, and, and that's the first time I met her. And uh, she's uh, she, so it's like I just discovered my new aunt. And she's she's beautiful, you know. So it's kind of exciting. I'm I just turned 66, and just this is like all new to me. So you never know what's what's going to happen. It's very very nostalgic. He is greatly missed. Well, yeah, he's he's the legend, you know. He's a great American character. He had the big mouth, and he was a great pool player, you know. And he loved telling the stories. And everybody likes the guy who gets up there and entertains them. And you know, he knew it, and he had it. It, it, it was it was channeling through him. He had the spirit, that's for sure. Tell me a story that uh, you can recall finally of him. Well, the last time I met him, I was a teenager, and he, my family lives down in uh, Studio City, and he was uh, playing a tournament down there, actually a promotional event. And so my father said, let's go down and, uh, you know, see uh, Minnesota Fats, and I'll introduce you to him. So we went, we went down, and it was pretty crowded, you know. He has a a lot of people wanted to see him and we kind of snuck in the room and just as my father stepped in the room and he hadn't seen him in about 10 years, uh, Minnesota Fats, without even looking up, says, oh, hi, Bernie. And Bernie was my father's name. And so uh, my mother is telling me that, boy, he knew everybody in the room. That was one of his talents. He was a super rare guy. He knew everything. He, he, he controlled the room. He was the man. And uh, so I was, in, I was nervous. and. And uh, I, I, I wanted to get talk to him and make touch, touch base with him. And I walked over to him and he saw me and he says, kid, I'll tell you two things. One, do what you love to do. And two, get the money. And I thought that's perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you for having me on the program.